It's always bothered me that artists don't have the advantage that piano players have when learning those skills in the beginning. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In all my years of teaching, painting and drawing, it's always bothered me that students seem to have the feeling they need a finished painting right at the beginning. Not only there, but that, but a lot of teachers require that from the get-go, uh, when people are learning to paint, they have evidence left behind, but piano players don't have that problem. If you're just beginning to learn to play the piano, um, you practice those awkward scales and it's gone. Nobody, no evidence there uh, for anybody to have to listen to. Well, we can do that with painting too, especially in oil painting where this is really easy. So if you're a beginning oil painter or if you're with uh, watercolor or acrylic or pastels, you can find your own way to make this work. But this works, this is more for oil painters. So here we go. Select a canvas that, um, that you don't really care about or that you can designate for this purpose. And it shouldn't be too large, but make it a size that feels comfortable for you. So that's where you begin. Then select a single subject to work with. It doesn't matter, just something that interests you. It can be a photograph, it can be a still life setup, or it can be something in plain air. Then decide on one concept. What that means is one thing you want to practice. So let's assume that uh, I want to practice brush stroke. So I've got, this is my subject, this is my photograph I've selected, and I want to hone my brush stroke, brush stroke skills. And let's just say that, that a teacher has just uh, introduced me to certain ways to practice brush strokes, especially for creating leaves. So, um, so here's what I would do on my canvas. And you might say, what was so unusual about this? Well, I'll show you in just a moment. So on my canvas, it doesn't matter what color I use for this. What matters is, first of all, and I didn't say this, I would want to select a, a single brush to work with. So I would select just one brush. In this case, it would be this little filbert. Select the one brush. I'm going to use this one brush to practice brush strokes. So, uh, so I take this leaf. I use that leaf as my guide for practicing brush strokes. So what do I know about brush, about brush strokes? Well, uh, I might have been taught that, okay, the, this is the beginning of the leaf here, and let's say if we just kind of made a little, made a few little parameters for that leaf to, to live, uh, say like this, this would be part of the practice where you, um, you set the parameters for the, the leaf, where the leaf's going to live. Now, uh, what I want to practice is stroking, stroking um, the edges, or stroking the the brush so that it actually shapes the leaf. Now that's my concept. That's what I'm going to be practicing. Doesn't I'm not practicing color. I don't. That's not important. Nothing's important here except how I move the brush. Now remember, this is an example of what you can do with this little um, this little um, ditty I'm showing you here. So okay, so I might say okay, I'm looking at this leaf and I'm seeing that shape like that. So I might practice moving the brush like this. I might practice moving the brush like that like this. Now what I'm seeing is here if I move the brush like that, it's going to flip out like this. If I catch the, the edges and move the brush in here, I get more of sort of that sort of thing. And I'm seeing if I move the brush down the edge here, I get more of a smooth. If I move the brush up here, I'm going to get more of that. Now that has given me information about this brush stroke, about how, how to use brush. Um, and so then I might play with that a little bit. Now this is like a piano player might discover something, some relationship, or might discover something about like maybe two or three of the notes are easier with these fingers than they are with these fingers. And so the piano player might might work with that just a little while. That's and so as a painter I might work with this just a little while. Say, okay, let me just see what happens. What are the ways that I can move the brush to make it actually interpret leaf. And so you would go through the entire the entire process. And so uh, once you had gone through it once, you say, okay, that was my first practice session. Now you wipe it away. And this is where this is where we get the same advantage as the piano player. Instead of having that evidence left behind, instead of feeling like that you have uh, wasted a canvas, 
you wipe that off. And I have a little bottle here with a little Gamsol in it, a little spray bottle. I'll just spray that area. I'll clean that up. It may leave a little stain behind, but it doesn't matter about that. I don't care. And I may just uh, a little bit more Gamsol. Clean that up. So now what do I do? I do that practice session again. I go through it again. I go through again. All right. So what? What? Uh, how? How can I use the brush stroke? Uh, how can I use this? This? Uh, this brush to create a brush stroke that interprets leaves. So I might go at it a different way this time. I might start at the edge this time and move towards. I might just do some ex exercises with the brush that does this. You get the idea. Once I've gone through that one, I'll take that one away and I'll do a third one. The idea is on a single concept, a single concept, if it's brush stroke, if you're working with a single brush stroke, practice that at least 10 times. You will learn more about using the brush, uh, doing something like this than you ever will if you're trying to, look, uh, to learn by actually creating a painting. This doesn't have to be the only exercise. You can use this method of wiping off, doing the exercise, wipe it away. Exercise, wipe it away. You can do that for color mixing exercises. You can do it for design exercises, uh, such things as trying to find visual paths or set up visual paths of a scene. There are numerous, numerous skills that we're trying to build as painters. We don't have to do complete paintings that get left behind and maybe embarrass, embarrass us 20 years down the road. We don't have to do that anymore. Now that we have this new method, all we need to do is do the exercises, wipe them away, and do them again. Now if your, paint, if your canvas, and this canvas you can keep, this is your exercise canvas. That's what its designated purpose is. So you can then, uh, once, once your exercise is over for uh, the day of the session, you can clean it up really good. If it gets too stained and bothers you, um, let me show you one more little thing that you can do then to keep this canvas going as your practice canvas. Um, and they will get stained. Um, you can wipe it down with some alcohol. And that takes the oil away. This is just rubbing alcohol. That takes the oil away. And sometimes, sometimes it takes away a good bit of the stain too. Then give it, uh, once, once you've gotten the major part of the stain off, give it a good coat of gesso, let it dry, and then you have it ready for your next session. So give that a try. And if you found this quick tip helpful, why not explore our full-length instructional videos at dianemise.com. We have well over a hundred full-length videos and DVDs for you to select from. And there's your quick tip.